spirit, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. <clears throat> I'm Don, the man with the frog in his throat. Glory to God. I just thank you, Lord, for the day. I just thank you for the morning. I just thank you for my brothers and sisters, Lord God. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you're doing in our lives. I thank you, Jesus, for giving your life for ours. And we can keep our eyes focused on you when we need to. And I just thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, good morning. I'm just going to start out with my definition. The definition is a distraction this morning. The word is about distraction, the things that distract us. Uh, and the definition for that is a thing that could prevent someone from giving full attention to something else or someone else. A division or a recreation. And uh, I just noticed in that that there wasn't somebody else that we can be distracted from from somebody else. And that somebody else in our life is the Lord. This morning on the trail, <laughs> I told the Lord, I said, I need to start walking at 5 in the morning. To start taking these dogs for a walk at 5 in the morning. <laughs> so there's not going to be anybody on the trail to distract them from what they need to do. Get their exercise, get their legs stretched out. <laughs> or distract me from being able to speak to the Lord, to talk, to have a conversation with my God. Well, this morning I had a distraction and I had to twist my dog's ear to get him to see things my way. But the Lord spoke to me about distractions. The distractions that would take our eyes off of God that aren't godly distractions. Now, I, I'm coming from the camp that there's two types of distractions. There's one that's blessed by the Lord, your job, taking care of your family, taking care of the things you need to take care of, and the other things is when you're supposed to be sitting before the Lord and other things come in and we allow those things in our lives and those can become sinful. Those can, call, those can draw us away from the Lord. And uh, so now that you know where I'm coming from, because this is like my third take this morning, or fourth take this morning, where I started and I had no word, and I believe the Holy Spirit is upon this one. And uh, anyway, my dog, <laughs> before he got his ear twisted, I was, be I was speaking him a prayer language, and he caught my attention, and instantly it's like, Get back here! Get back here! Get back here! <laughs> He didn't come, so it took my eyes off the Lord for, for just enough time to get me a little bit angry. And when you get angry, it's hard to get back into the Spirit. So you're distracted, and the Lord said the enemy will use simple things to distract you. And that was His Word to me. And I knew that that was the Word for this morning, was distractions. What distracts you from the Lord? Me wiggling around, does it distract you? Yeah, what distracts you from seeing God? What distracts you from getting up in front of the Lord and just spending time with Him? And uh, the, does the storms of your life distract you and cause you to <laughs> fall out into fear and, 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 and have many backslides? Many. I didn't say many. I said many backslides. Where, where you run away from the Lord for the day. Um, I've got a lot of scripture here, so I want to get into it. In uh, Matthew 14, 27 through 32, it starts out, But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. He came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink, crying out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took a hold of him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. So, you know, <laughs> Peter's got a physical vision of Jesus right in front of him. He sees him. He's, he's got his full focus on him. He's walking on water and all of a sudden something comes up, 
catches his eye <laughs> and he becomes afraid. And how many times do we do that? <laughs> I mean, think about it. How many times do we allow things to take our focus off of God? Like I said, I'm coming from there's two things, two sides, a right and a left. On the right side, you have your job, you have your family, you have your responsibilities, and God understands those things. And they don't, they, they don't give Him any fear, they don't give Him any pause. God does not live in fear, by the way. God is not worried. He doesn't give God worry. And even on the left side, God doesn't worry. And you're going to see this. This hand moving is going to look like it's on the right, but that's only because of the way a video records. It always records the opposite side. This is my right. <laughs> this is my left. And the things that are on the left are my dog running ahead. And me, instead of me staying in peace, <laughs> I, I let the winds distract me and I sink into a depth of anger. A bill comes. And you're wondering how you're going to pay it. You know, you were just in worship and praise before the Lord and the mailman brings a bill and says, Oh, do now! <laughs> and you ain't got that 500 bucks. And you sink. <laughs> You're walking on water, then you sink. <laughs> so, why do we let these things distract us? And God's not worried about those things that make us sink. Jesus didn't start sinking with Peter. Jesus didn't let that wind bother him. He knew who he was. And he was in communication with the Father. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm getting excited. I'm seeing a picture of this right now. Jesus knew who He was. He always had focus on the Father. He always knew what the Spirit of God was doing. Because the Spirit of God lived in Him. And He lives in us. But we're, we're, we're so much of, oh, you little face. <laughs> Faith, not faces. <laughs> we, we lose our focus real easy. I'm not the only one that loses my focus. And anybody that says that they're totally focused on God 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, they're living in a cave, they're a monk. But if you live in a place like modern day America, there's all kinds of distractions. And, and we got to have our faith facing Jesus. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> we got to face Jesus. we got to keep our eyes on Him. As soon as we take our eyes off of Him, we begin to sink. And my second scripture is 2 Corinthians 4.18. It says, As we look not into the things that are seen, but into the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, and the things that are unseen are eternal. We look to Jesus because He's eternal. He, I don't see Him physically, but I believe I see Him spiritually. I see Him through my spiritual eyes. And like I said, on the left-hand side, God's not afraid or worried about those things because He knows how to reach down and pull us up as soon as we cry out. <laughs> Glory to God! I just, I just had a, I just saw Jesus reaching down through the water, pulling me back up as I was sinking, and and and, and saying, this. The distractions take your eyes off of me. You don't allow those things to take your eye off. Glory. <laughs> Glory to God. And my next scripture is Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay a, aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, or in the King James' the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. 
Jesus never took his eyes off the Father. He said, I see what the Father's doing. <laughs> and I honestly, I believe that in our spiritual life, in the time that we spend with the Lord, that we can come to a place where nothing can distract us. That we can run that race that's set out before us. And again, I will say it for the third time, there's things on the right side and things from the left. And the things from the left are what draw our eyes off of God. The things of the right are our responsibilities in life that God understands and has grace on, has much grace on. Ooh, that's a good word. That the responsibilities that you have, God has grace on those things. And you can't have your eyes on God during those things. Maybe not totally, maybe not perfectly, but the grace is there. And God doesn't hold that against you. There's no sin in it. On the other side, on the other hand, we have three things coming against us to draw our attention off of God. And these things work against the Lord. Number one, your flesh. Where is your head at? What's up here? Between these two things. <laughs> Number two, the world. Television. Movies. Uh... This drama and that drama. This gossip and that gossip. And then the enemy. And, and, and this, is, this is the thing. He'll use the smallest thing to get your attention real fast. Like my dog. I believe he used the dog for the past two days to get my attention off the Lord. And if we can grab a hold of that and apply those things to our lives and ask for discernment between those three things, imagine how powerful we will walk. <laughs> Glory! Glory to you, God! Praise the name of the Lord! I'm excited! <laughs> Glory! <laughs> Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Praise His holy name. You might be wondering about my t-shirt. I'm, I'm sure that some people wonder about my t-shirt. It's a skull and crossbone. <laughs> it's a skull and crossbones. And, and if you look at the crossbones, it, they're gas pump handles. And I'm not, I'm not advocating stealing anything. Just the shirt that I have. But in case anybody was wondering about it, God's good with me wearing it. He's not offended. <laughs> and neither should you be offended. And uh, so anyway, uh, back to what I was talking about. We got distracted there for a second. Anyhow, uh, we need to keep our focus fixed on the Lord. F-F-O-L. <laughs> fixed, focused on the Lord. And... Uh, I believe that in our spiritual lives that we could center our lives on the Lord. I'm working towards that goal. That's part of our race. This is when you endure the race that is set before you. Your eyes are on Jesus. He is our prize. He is our prize. And you must remember that. And uh, I've got something going on here. Oh. Um, I, I'm just going to say thank you for coming and spending some time with me. And thank you for being who you are in Jesus. And allowing me to be who I am. Sometimes silly, sometimes not silly. Sometimes serious, sometimes yelling and screaming. But if we can separate the right from the left, and see that the right is a blessed side, it's full of grace, and we can and, and we can overcome the left side. Hey, we're on our way. Jesus said we can do these things. He said, Great He said, You can do these things, and greater things will you do. So that means we can walk exactly like Jesus. Think about that. And I thank you, Father, for uh, my brothers and sisters. I thank you for the day with them. I thank you, Lord God, that you love us. I thank you, Jesus, that you died for us. That you are our vision. You are the prize that we, we run after. We run for the goal. The calling of God on our lives. 
And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you can take this message and you can make something good out of it. And I just thank you again for my brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name. And, and I'm about to climb onto my plane and take off again. And I just want to say, have a great day. Bless your day. I speak life over you. I declare hope over you. In Jesus' name. You are awesome. You are awesome. Where am I going? Where's my ship? Oh, there's my ship. Well, I'll see you later. <laughs>